Hi everyone! Welcome to the first Sunday of July and the second half of 2020. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. So let us all join our hearts together as we sing song of worship to our God.
Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 to 27. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, truly it is only because of you that we are not consumed. Because your compassions, they never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Lord, we come to you today, Lord, with, with heavy hearts because of the pandemic that has ravaged the whole world. And Lord, we come to you right now even with anxious hearts, not knowing what's going to happen to us tomorrow and in the coming days. But Lord, we are aware that we are coming to our loving and gracious Heavenly Father who cares for us and who has spared no expense for us to be able to be redeemed and sanctified and assured that we are His and He is ours. And so, Lord, this morning, we come to you boldly with great confidence, only through the mercies that you have lavished on us through the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for your never-ending grace in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for for always providing for all of our needs. Thank you for our health. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us stable and secured. Thank you, Lord, for a shelter, a roof over our head, and food on the table. Lord, would you always constantly teach us, Lord, to, to be grateful about these simple things, knowing that all of these are mercies from you. Lord, we thank you also, Lord, for the opportunity to gather together even though we are apart, we are gathered in your presence, Lord, at this moment. Lord, thank you because your hands are, are big and could reach out to every heart that is uh, tuned in right now in our online worship service. Lord, would you minister to us in your own special way? Would you uplift our souls, Lord, and retune our hearts uh, to, to hear your voice and to see your purposes in our lives? Lord, you say in your word that, that if we cherish iniquity in our hearts, that you would not hear. And so at this moment, Lord, we come to you with a contrite spirit and a broken heart, Lord, asking you to, to see through our lives and examine what is in our hearts. I pray, Lord, that you would examine us thoroughly at this moment. Lord, I pray that you would, you would just come into our hearts and you would just reveal the things that we have done that our sins against you, Lord, things that we have done knowingly and unknowingly. And we ask, Lord, for your mercy. And would you pardon us, Lord, for our wrongdoings before you. Lord, we thank you even for our church. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness in guiding us and leading us every step of the way. Truly, Lord, you are the pastor and the leader of our church. And it is to you that we look to for strength and direction and purpose, Lord. Thank you because you never fail us. Lord, I pray now that you would bless us, Lord, as we continue to worship you and adore you even in the study of your word. Would you be exalted in our midst, Lord? Would you lift up the name of Jesus? As you have said in your, in your word, Lord, that when the Son of Man is lifted up, you will draw all men to yourself. And so, Lord, I pray that you would bond our hearts together at this moment that you would ready our hearts and our minds to take heed of your word. And that, Lord, in everything that we say and do, 
that you would receive all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Church. Our scripture reading for this Sunday is taken from the book of Haggai, chapter 2, verses 10 to 23. On the 24th day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Ask the priest about the law. If someone carries holy meat in the fold of his garment and touches with his fold bread or stew or wine or oil or any food, kind of food does it become holy the priest answered and said no then Haggai said if someone who is unclean by contact with a dead body touches any of these does it become unclean the priest answered and said it does become unclean then Haggai answered and said so is it with his people and with his nation before me declares the Lord and so with every work of their hands and what they offer there is unclean now then, consider from this day onward, before stone was placed upon stone in the temple of the Lord, how did you fare? When one came to a heap of twenty measures, there were but ten. When one came to the wine vat to draw fifty measures, there were but twenty. I struck you and all the products of your toil with blight and with mildew and with hail, yet you did not turn to me, declares the Lord. Consider from this day onward, on the twenty-fourth day of the ninth month, since the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider, is the seed yet in the barn? Indeed, the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have yielded nothing. But from this day on, I will bless you. The word of the Lord came a second time to Haggai on the twenty-fourth day of the month. Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I am about to shake the heavens and the earth and to overthrow the throne of kingdoms. I am about to destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the nations and overthrow the chariots and their riders. And the horses and their riders shall go down, everyone by the sword of his brother. And that day declares the Lord of hosts, I will take you, O Zerubbabel my servant, the son of Shealtiel, declares the Lord, and make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you declares the Lord of hosts. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Hi, good morning everyone. Welcome to our worship service here at GCF Makati. Before we get started in studying the word of the Lord, I just want to say a big thank you uh, to everyone who had participated in our worship time this morning. And thank you, Joy. Thank you, Faith. And thank you, Jess, for leading us in a wonderful time of singing to the Lord. I praise God for giving you the talents and uh, the desire and the joy uh, to worship the Lord in this way. Uh, thank you, Zian, also for taking time uh, to record for us a reading of the word of the Lord in Haggai chapter 2. Uh, praise the Lord for, for your availability and for your eagerness to serve the Lord. Uh, thank you everybody who had participated in the worship service and I pray the Lord's blessing upon you. Uh, to everyone who's atten attending GCF Makati for the first time uh, virtually here online, my name is Rolovic and in behalf of our whole church family, I just want to say you're uh, welcome to GCF Makati and if we are in our physical uh, space of worship uh, right now we would have offered you a, a warm a hot cup of coffee to drink with you and to chit chat with you about what the Lord is doing in your life and what the Lord is doing in GCF Makati but though we're scattered right now we are gathered in the presence of the Lord so I hope you have your cup of coffee and everyone who's uh, joining us right now you can drink your cup of coffee I hope you're awake and really enthusiastic and eager to study the Word of the Lord this morning. So welcome everybody. I am I'm so delighted that we could study the Word of the Lord together this morning. Hey, before we get started, why don't we join our hearts in prayer? 
Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with this truth. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives, um, even as we contemplate your word this morning. O Holy Spirit, we submit to you our affections, our minds, and our wills. Would you take them captive? Would you help us to see Jesus this morning and to commune with him and to be changed by him? We surrender to you everything, Lord. Uh, we worship you and we glorify you in Jesus name we pray amen you know the passage uh, that we have today is a uh, very beautiful and I'm so excited to share it with you you know we are wrapping up our study of the book of Haggai this week and I just praise the Lord for for everything that he has taught us and everything has taught me personally as I've uh, as I've uh, gone through this book every single day and just trying to understand what the Lord has to say and I, and, and I just uh, I just find this book so um, so pertinent and so timely to the time that we are in right now we are we are trying to get back to a, a new sense of normal coming out of a, a time of um, constraint and unease because of the quarantine and because of the pandemic that's still with us and we are trying to reintegrate into into life as we know it and the book of Haggai talks about that where after 70 years of Babylonian captivity um, they're coming back the Israelites are coming back to to Jerusalem and they're rebuilding the temple of the Lord and um, and the fascinating thing is the surprising thing about it is you know you would expect that just just coming in and reintegrating into into the normalcy of life would just be smooth and it just would be easy but the book of, the book of Haggai shows us that it's not that the Israelites encountered snag and difficulty one after the other but yet through it all the Lord was with them Hey, let me read to you a passage uh, from from this whole text that we'll be, we are going to be studying this morning. Um, in your Bibles, join me in Haggai chapter 2 verse 18 and 19. Haggai chapter 2 verse 18 and 19. This is what it says. Uh, Consider from this day onward, from the 24th day of the ninth month, since the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. Consider, is the seed yet in the barn? Indeed, the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have yielded nothing. But from this day on, I will bless you. But from this day on, I will bless you. Is that, are those words something that you'd like to hear from the Lord? You know, I don't know about you, but but as for me, you know, these are words that I just long to hear from the Lord. If the Lord would just speak verbally to me and vocally to me right now and he would say these things to me, I would be really happy. Just coming off of a very difficult time, the Lord says to his people uh, as they're building the temple in Jerusalem, you know what? You're coming off of a season of constraint, captivity and difficulty even as you follow my commands. But from this day on, this particular day, remember the day the Lord uh, really intentionally allowed the prophet Haggai to record the day, the 24th day of the ninth month. From this day onward, I will bless you. Today, I just want to consider to you what that means. Isn't that something we always say, God bless, you know, uh, or we shorten it when, when you're texting or you're messaging somebody, we just say GBU. And God bless is a word, uh, our, our words that are constantly on our lips. We say it to people all the time, especially on Sunday. God bless you, kapatid. God bless you. And, you know, it's just funny. It, you know, the more we say words like this, the more it loses its meaning. So today, I just wanna just wanna explore what it means to be blessed by the Lord. You know, when the Lord says to you, "From this day onward, I will bless you," and just mapping the road to divine blessing. Do you want to receive the blessing of the Lord this morning? Do you want to experience the blessing of the Lord once again after a season of constraint and difficulty? I know I do. And so I'm excited to study the word of the Lord with you this morning. Now, there are four parts to understanding um, how the Lord blesses. Four parts. Number one, uh, the part of contamination, part of consideration, part of compassion, and communion. Contamination consideration compassion and then communion um, let's just dive into it right so the first part is contamination contamination uh, 
Before we get to that, it's just fascinating to me once again, and just mention it once again, that the Lord is very specific in uh, in marking out the specific moments where he speaks to the people of Israel as they're rebuilding the temple. Um, right now in Haggai chapter 2 verse 10, the, the date is just clear for us on the 24th day of the ninth month in the second year of, of Darius. Um, let me just plot this out before you and, and hopefully we would just get an understanding of what's going on at this time. So everything here, uh, everything is going on in the second year of King Darius, right? Second year of King Darius. Now, in Haggai chapter 1 verse 1, we would find that, that the Lord spoke on the sixth month on the first day. And the Lord spoke to the people of Israel uh, because they have left the building of the temple undone. The reason why that happened is because of a certain snag where after laying the foundation of the temple, the people, uh, the inhabitants of the land surrounding Jerusalem, they were just uh, frustrating the plans of, of this um, returning exiles. They're just frustrating them and discouraging them and very antagonistic uh, to the building of, of the temple. And so, you know, the people of Israel, Israel uh, under the leadership of Zerubbabel and Joshua and, and the rest of them you know they just left the work of the Lord undone for 16 years right and um, unfortunately uh, they, they began um, to reprioritize and reason out to the Lord and so on the sixth month the first day um, we read these words Haggai chapter 1 verse 2 uh, to 4 uh, it says, um, Thus says the Lord of hosts, These people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai, the prophet. Is it a time for you yourself to dwell in your paneled houses while this house lies in ruin? And so just the Lord just confronts them because of their failure uh, to rebuild the house of the Lord. Well, just when they just minded their own business and just being inwardly focused and just reprioritizing to build their own home. So that's the first time that the Lord spoke to the people of Israel in the book of Haggai. The second time that the Lord spoke to the people of Israel, Haggai chapter 2, specifically in verse 1, it is on the seventh month on the 21st day. So this is what we talked about uh, uh, last week now they had reintegrated and now at this point they have begun and re-begun uh, the work of building the temple and now after a month and 21 days they're trying they're, they're beginning to see the structure of the temple come about unfortunately instead of uh, creating excitement in their hearts there are people in Israel who just felt that um, they felt really depressed about what's coming up because they're comparing the temple that they built to the temple that Solomon built and Solomon's temple was just bigger and grander and against that and compared to that what they're building is just nothing and so Haggai 2 verse 3 to 4 the Lord says who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory how do you see it now is it not as nothing in your eyes Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord. Work, for I am with you, declares the Lord of hosts. And so they had another, another snag, and that's the snag of nostalgia. They cannot move forward because they're fixated on former glory. Remember our lesson? We cannot move towards increasing glory if we are fixated on former glories. And the Lord just encouraged them, and the Lord said, you know, be strong, Zerubbabel. Be strong, Joshua. And get on with the work. And so these are the first two instances when the Lord spoke um, to the people of Israel. Uh, we skip uh, the eighth month and now today we are on the ninth month. Now let's let's just focus here. Uh, and, and, and I wonder, you know, and as I was studying this passage... Now, what happened on the eighth month, right? Because now on the ninth month, as we have read a while ago, the Lord is saying, right, from, from, from the time that you had laid the foundation, you were under tremendous difficulty and I had just withheld blessing from you because you refused to do the work. But now in the ninth month, in Haggai chapter 2, uh, verse 19 specifically, the Lord says, I will bless you now, right? And so my question is, how does God's people transition from a season of difficulty to a season of blessing? What is in the middle of that? 
right? Specifically, now we're coming out of a season of rest, tremendous difficulty and constraint because of the ECQ in GCQ. And now, how do we move from this to a time of blessing? And how does the Lord do that in our lives? Um, it's interesting to me as I pondered uh, this question, whatever happened to the eighth month? You know what? Uh, I realized that the answer to that is not really in the book of Haggai, but in the book of Zechariah. See, Zechariah and Haggai are contemporary prophets. Let me just read to you what it says in Zechariah chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. This is what it says. In the eighth month... So remember that gap, that month that we're missing? In the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo, saying, The Lord was very angry with your fathers, therefore say to them, Thus, says, thus declares the Lord of hosts, Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Do not be like your fathers, to whom the former prophets cried out. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Return from your evil ways and from your evil deeds. But they did not hear or pay attention to me, declares the Lord. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not overtake your, prover your, your fathers? So they repented and said, As the Lord of hosts purposed to deal with us for our ways and deeds, so has he dealt with us. So apparently this is what happened on the eighth month. So remember, on those first two months, the sixth month and the seventh month, the Israelites were hitting two snags. A snag of, um, of false priorities, wrong priorities, and then the snag of nostalgia, right? And right in the middle of that, the Lord uses Zechariah to call the people of Israel to repent. Isn't that the repeated word here? Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. And, and just in the Lord's providence, the people of Israel heeded the call of both Haggai and Zechariah, and they repented, and they turned back to the Lord. And that's what happened in the middle. And now in Haggai chapter 2, uh, verse 10 onwards, we're picking up now. You know, the Lord is now addressing these people who just repented to uh, repented of their ways and just trying to come back to the Lord. And now they're trying and doing their best to follow uh, the Lord's ways. So all of these to say, and I know, I know this is a lot of information for maybe some of you to digest. But, but all of these to say, imagine you're a parent. Right, you're a parent, and you just have a you you're, you have a mischievous child, and just doesn't want to listen to you, and so you you bring out the rod and you discipline your child, right? And uh, you 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 give your child some punishment and consequences, and after that, um, your child mellows down. The child says sorry, and now after the child says sorry, you sit your 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 son or your daughter on your lap, and now you're explaining to them what had happened. You're explaining to them what necessitated you to discipline them, what necessitate what 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 lessons their child has to learn to move forward. So this is the ending of Haggai. The Lord called his people to do something. His people rebelled and did not do what the Lord commanded them to do. The Lord disciplined him discipline them and now at the end of the book of Haggai the Lord is sitting down with his kids and just saying you know this is what happened this is where you went wrong and now this is how you move forward so that in the future you would receive my blessing instead of my judgment so so all of this to say you know here's the principle that I would like for everyone to learn you know there is no blessing from the Lord apart from obedience there is no blessing apart from obedience. And this is the whole, the, the whole theme of the book of Haggai. Unless we obey the Lord, the Lord will not bless us. And uh, it's very important for us to understand that because we can be under this delusion and just false uh, thinking that, you know, we can, we can just kind of fake it, right? And, um, you know, isn't that true in our lives that we can pretend to follow the Lord where in fact we're not actually following the Lord this is how the Lord illustrates where the people of Israel went wrong 
right? So Haggai chapter 2, verse 10 to 14. Just listen to what the Lord says. On the 24th day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Ask the priests about the law. If someone carries holy meat in the fold of his garment and touches with, the, with his fold bread or stew or wine or oil or any kind of food, does it become holy? The priest answered and said, No. Then Haggai said, If someone who is unclean by contact with a dead body touches any of these, does it become unclean? The priests answered and said, It does become unclean. Then Haggai answered and said, So is it with this people and with this nation before me, declares the Lord, and so with every work of their hands, and what they offer there is unclean. Now, what is the Lord saying here? Now, this is a very, this is an illustration that is very timely for us. Let me rephrase it in words that we can understand. Diba? Most of us right now, I don't know if you're like me, but I always carry around alcohol in my pocket and just you know every time i have to go out go to the grocery store and go to the mall and i just dab alcohol on my hands and rub it just to make sure my hands are clean right so okay so imagine i have this alcohol and i just dab uh, some drops on my hands and just and just had purified my hands so imagine i'm walking and for some reason i um Oh, there it is. I, 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 I pick up a mask uh, off of the floor. And, uh, you know, the mask looks like it hasn't been used. And um, yeah, I think to myself, maybe I can use it. Would you advise me to do that? You wouldn't? Uh, what if I said, you know, I, I'll just... I'll, I'll dab alcohol again on my hands and I, I, I'm just going to put it in my face and that uh, now can I use this mask that I just picked up on off of the floor can I put it on my mouth now of course not right it doesn't matter how many alcohol I dab on my hand even if I put it in my face this cleansing of my hands does not cleanse the mask that I just picked off of the floor and I don't know where it came from. Now, if, on the other hand, if I, for some reason, put on this mask on its face and if this mask is dirty, do I become dirty? Do I become contaminated as well? Of course I am contaminated. I inhale whatever it is that this mask has. You know what? That's what the Lord is saying to the people of Israel. You know what? Most of you, you know, you go to the temple and you you do the rituals. You do, do religious activities and you come home and you think you're clean because you just dab some alcohol on your hands. But you know what? You know what? Whenever you touch something... You, just, you, you do not transmit holiness to the things that you touch. But quite on the contrary, you are contaminated with what you touched. So it is with your work, the Lord says. So it is with this people and with this nation before me, declares the Lord. And so with every work of their hands. And what they offer there is unclean. Here's a lesson that I have learned in my life. You know what? Whenever I we have a garage here in my in our house, and um, and sometimes I sit there with 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 Barks and Punchy, and I just play with them. You know what? When I sit in my garage, I don't become a car. <laughs> in the same way, when I sit in church, I don't automatically become Christian. But quite on the contrary, you know, whenever I participate in the work of the Lord, and my heart is not right before the Lord, whatever I touch. It becomes unclean and the Lord sees through that and the Lord says, you know what? I am not pleased with what you're doing because what you have to offer me is contaminated. It's unclean. You do not transmute righteousness, but on the contrary, you're, you're, just, you're just defiling things that are supposed to be holy. You know, Amos, uh, this, is, this is a problem with the Israelites and not only them with us, right? Amos addresses it, the prophet Amos, in Amos 5, uh, verse 21 to 24. Amos says, uh, the Lord says, I hate, I despise your feasts 
And I take no delight in your solemn assemblies, even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings for your fattened animals, of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me those noise of your songs, to the melody of your harps. I will not listen, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Now the Lord sees through the f- the hypocrisy and the fake righteousness that we have. And the Lord says, take that away from me. That's not what I want to see. I want to see a changed life. In fact, Isaiah speaks to that as well. Isaiah 64 verse 6. Isaiah says, We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like polluted garments. Polluted garments. Filthy rags. Imagine a a mass that's just been laying on the ground and just contaminated. This is our righteousness. And whenever we put it on, we do not transmute holiness. What we have... It's just more contamination in our lives. You know what? Holiness, personal holiness cannot be manufactured with contaminated hands. Holiness cannot be manufactured with contaminated hands. We are contaminated people. And unless there's something that changes on the inside, all we can offer even as we work for the Lord is just filth. And the Lord sees through that. And so, the second part of this whole conversation is that we have to consider our ways. We really have to think what we are doing. And the reason why we have to think about what we're doing is that we are superfluous to our contamination. We are superfluous to our contamination. It's just like COVID, right? Um, we are asked to stay as ho- to stay at home as much as possible. Uh, not only because we can be contaminated if we go out, we can c- contract the virus, but but more importantly, we can also be carrier of the virus. You know, if we're not careful, maybe our immune systems are just high and um, the symptoms does not manifest. That doesn't mean that the virus is not on you. And we have to be considerate because we are superfluous to our contamination. We just go about our lives as if we are not we we don't have problems at all but when the lord looks at our lives he sees the filth that is in it so the lord calls us to really consider in haggai 2 verse uh, 15 to 19 that's the emphasis of the lord listen to what the lord says now then consider from this day onward before stone was placed upon stone in the temple of the lord how did you fare when one came to a heap of 20 measures there were but 10 when one came to the wine vat to draw 50 measures there were but 20 i struck you and all the products of your toil with blight and mildew and with hail yet you did not turn to me declares the lord consider from this day onward from the 24th day of the ninth month since the day that the foundation of the lord's temple was laid consider is the seed yet in the barn Indeed, the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, the olive, she have yielded nothing. But from this day on, I will bless you. Three times in this passage, the Lord calls His people to consider. In other words, pag-isipan nyo nga itong ginagawa nyo. Think about your ways. Think about how you're conducting your life. Um, and and the Lord really talks about two time two 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 moments here, right? The first moment is before stone was placed upon stone. How did you fare? Ibig sabihin, nung nagsimula kayo when you started rebuilding the temple hanggang ngayon, uh, the 24th day, right? Uh, uh, of the ninth month you know, from from the time that you have started up to this point, kamusta? Ano nangyari sa inyo? And here's the Lord's evaluation of what had happened to them. Think about what you reaped. The first one that the Lord says, you know, when you came to a heap of 20 measures, there were but 10. When you came to, came to the wine vat to draw 50 measures, there were but 20. What is the Lord pointing out here? Ever since you started the building of the temple with your haphazard service to me, really prioritizing yourself over the temple of the Lord, when you, when you began this work of the Lord, you had incomplete blessing. Incomplete blessing. Look at the blessing. There's blessing naman, diba? When, when, when they came to a heap of 20 measures, 
they got 10. But it was not the full 20. When they came to the wine vat, they, they were supposed to draw 50 measures. They only draw 20. So instead of 100%, they got like what? 50, 30% of what they're supposed to get? And the Lord says, did not you, you notice that your haphazard service to me made you reap an incomplete blessing? Haven't you thought about that in your life? Sometimes we are just going about our day not minding that we are contaminated and we are not noticing that we're not actually enjoying the full blessing of the Lord. We're just enjoying part of it, but not the full blessing of the Lord. So that's the first thing that the Lord points out about their contamination. The second thing the Lord points out in verse 17, God says, I struck you and all the products of your toil with blight and mildew and hail, yet you did not turn to me, declares the Lord. So, <laughs> I, you know, you gave me haphazard service, I gave you haphazard blessing. And you still did not notice, so here's what I did. I gave you stale and rotten blessing. What did the Lord say? I, I, I spoiled your products. Right? I caused it to rot. I sent mildew. Uh, I sent blight and hail. But still you are so callous and not to not even turning back to me, not re even realizing that you have offended me. Right? You have stale and rotten blessing. And this goes unnoticed in our lives most of the time. You know, I realized that one time in one of my Bible studies back back when I was serving in GCF Ortigas as a volunteer um, I had a Bible study with uh, with people who who just met the Lord uh, in one of our evangelistic ministries and we have this outreach Bible studies and it it, it, it hosts eclectic people from from the most seasoned Christian uh, to to a, to a person who's just homeless and just found our group just walking down the street and so we're catering to an eclectic group and i asked the group a question and the question was what is your sweetest moment with jesus and everybody uh, gave their peace and most of them said you know uh, five years ago i had i have this sickness and the lord helped me uh, some said you know th my sweetest moment with jesus was like 30 years ago when when i got to know him the first time and he saved me and then out of nowhere this um this this old lady just raises his uh, frail hands and says, Pastor, uh, can I share? You know, my sweetest moment of Jesus is just right now. When I come to this Bible study and I hear the word of the Lord and I get to fellowship with you. And that made me realize that most of the time when I think about the Lord's blessing, I'm thinking about 5, 10, 15 years ago, 25 years ago. And, and I'm not realizing that, you know, that the Lord is blessing me right now. And when I don't realize it, the blessing grows stale. Sayang, because it's unrecognized. I did not savor it. Napapanis lang. We're superfluous to our own contamination. So we reap incomplete blessing. We reap stale, rotten blessing. And finally, the blessing is just absent in our lives. Nawawala. So Haggai uh, 18 to 19, sabi ni God, Consider from this day onward, from the 24th day of the ninth month, since the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. Consider, is the seed yet in the barn? Indeed, the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have yielded nothing. Umpisa, wala. Sumunod, panis. Ngayon, wala na. Uh, kulang, panis, wala. You know, incomplete, stale, and then absent. You know, and sometimes we're just superfluous to it because we just think, you know, the reason why it's gone is because I did not fertilize the ground. It's the reason it's gone. You know, I didn't do, do really well. And we're just thinking of our own efforts. And the Lord says, hey, guys, haven't you seen all of these calls from me for you to repent? We need correction. We read correction in our lives. We really need to consider our ways because otherwise we won't realize how contaminated we are. And sometimes it's just frustrating on the Lord's side. You know, He keeps on barking against us. He just keeps on yelling at us. And yet we still couldn't hear. We still couldn't hear. You know, it. okay lang naman ako eh. May problema lang. Okay lang naman ako. But, but the Lord says, Hoy! Gising! Hey, look at this. Incomplete blessing, stale rotten blessing, and absent blessing. You don't, you, you don't begin to realize anymore that the Lord's hand is not upon you anymore. 
But the Lord says, so that's the first point, you know, before stone was placed upon stone, when you were serving me haphazard, this is what you got, in, incomplete blessing, stale blessing, and absent blessing. But now, but now, after you have repented, now that you are obeying me, from this day on, I will bless you. Again, friends, remember, the main point of this whole study is that there is no blessing apart from obedience. If you are going to give the Lord haphazard obedience, He's going to give you haphazard blessing. If you refuse to obey the Lord, the blessing of the Lord will not be with you. The question is, do you want to be blessed by the Lord? Then obey the Lord. That's the only way to reap the blessing of the Lord God. Listen to what Jesus said. Uh, and he said to them, Mark 4, 24 to 25, Pay attention to what you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you, and still more will be added to you. For to those, for to the one who has, more will be given. And from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Ang sinasabi ni Jesus, so you have to consider how you're hearing things from, from me. You have to consider how you're hearing things from the Lord. Because if you hear something from the Lord, right? The Lord would judge you based on what He actually told you. See, if, 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 if you hear something from the Lord, and if you, do, you don't put it in practice, you know, even what you think you have, it will be taken away. Um, you know, I used to think that this passage is so harsh naman. Parang konti na nga lang yung meron ako. I just have a few and still the Lord will take that away. I, I, I found it difficult when I was younger to understand this until such a time that I learned to play guitar. I learned to play guitar in the... In the because I was a high school student, all I knew was you know some some punk and rock music to play, and uh, but my my dad just just challenged me and said, "Why don't you uh, why don't you uh, try playing for the Lord? Why why don't you join your the worship ministry of the church and just play for the Lord?" And I said, "Fine, yeah, excuses, excuses," and and the Lord said, uh, and my dad said, "You know." If you're not going to use that talent for, for the Lord, you won't have that talent at all. If, if you're not going to use it, you know, if, if, if you're not going to use that talent for the Lord, you're not going to have that talent and the Lord will take it away from you. And, and you know that's true. You know, I, you know if, if you just refuse, you know, um, I haven't played the guitar for a while now and, and I picked it up last week because Pam and I had, had to sing at Capitira. It, it was so difficult for me to play. What little you have, it will be taken away from you. So be careful with what you hear. Make sure that you're hearing things right from the Lord. Consider your ways. Are you contaminated? Allow the Lord to minister to your heart. And make every effort to obey the Lord because without obedience, there's no blessing from the Lord. So think about it. Your contamination, that's a real situation. And so we have to really consider it because if we do, the Lord will show compassion towards us. The Lord will show compassion towards us. Um, and so the Lord promised, um, promised that from that day onward that He would bless them. From that way, that day onward, He would bless them. And then Haggai 2, verse 20 to 23, um, the Lord shifts focus now. And he talks specifically about a specific person, and that person is Zerubbabel. Now listen to the words of Haggai chapter two, verses twenty to twenty-three. And you know what? This is interesting to me. I want to spend. I know. I know. I have little time left, but left. But but you know what? When I studied this, uh, it just blew my mind. So just bear with me. Um, it, it might be a little tedious, but I I promise you, it it would. There's something here that that's really beautiful. I really want you to understand. So, so the Lord is talking specifically. You know, after He just promised the Israelites that He would bless them, He 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 zones His attention. He focuses His attention on on this man Zerubbabel. Haggai two, twenty to twenty-three. The word of the Lord came a second time to Haggai on the twenty-fourth day of the of the month. Speak to Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, saying, I am about to shake the heavens and the earth and overthrow the throne of kingdoms. I am about to destroy the strength of the kingdoms 
of the nations and overthrow the chariots and their riders and the horses and the riders shall go down every one by the sword of his brother on that day declares the Lord of hosts I will take you O Zerubbabel my servant the son of Shealtiel declares the Lord and make you like a signet ring for I have chosen you declares the Lord of hosts so I, I, I paused and, and I really thought about this and I did a little research about this you know what's fascinating here you know as I was studying this I, I was led by the Lord to to something that the prophet Jeremiah had said in Jeremiah 22 24 to 30 now now I just want to want for you to file that in your memory what the Lord said to Zerubbabel first that he the Lord would make Zerubbabel like a signet ring because God has chosen him right okay so file that word in your mind right now signet ring okay now we turn to the book of Jeremiah chapter 22 24 to 30 and this is what we read as I live declares the Lord though Coniah in your Bible but that's King Jeconiah the son of Jehoiakim king of Judah were the signet ring on my hand yet I would tear you off and give you into the hand of those who seek your life into the hand of those of whom you were afraid even into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon and to the hand of the Chaldeans I will hurl you and the mother who bore you into another country where you were not born and there you shall die but to the land to which they will long to return there they shall not return is this the man, uh, Jeconiah, a despised broken pot, a vessel no one cares for? Why are he and his children hurled and cast into a land uh, that they do not know? O land, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, write this man down as childless, a man who shall not succeed in his days for none of his offspring shall succeed in sitting on the throne of David and ruling again in Judah now remember what the Lord said to Zerubbabel see the Lord was talking Jeconiah and you know uh, Zechoniah is the last king of Judah he was the king um, that the Babylonians overthrew and sent into prison into Babylon and into captivity and the Lord says to Jeconiah because the people of Israel was so stubborn you know Jeconiah I have chosen your family to be my ambassador to wear that signet ring you know what a signet ring is it, it's a ring that um, the king wears that ring and whenever the king sends a message that's where the stamp of the king is it's where the king the seal of the king is and the Lord says you know what I have apportioned your family to bear my mark of authority and yet because you despise the word of the Lord and you just don't want to repent I will tear you off and I will throw you away into captivity and the Lord says that the descendants of Jeconiah shall not succeed for none of his offspring shall succeed in sitting on the throne of David and ruling again in Judah this is the judgment of the Lord and so the Lord says you know um, okay I'm gonna throw you into exile I will just break the line of kings and and that just throws everything into this array and the difficulty there is that in the next chapter in Jeremiah chapter 23 right Jeremiah chapter 23 starting from verse 5 to verse 6 this is what the Lord promises the Lord says behold the days are coming declares the Lord when I will raise up for David a righteous branch and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and execute justice and righteousness in the land in his days Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell securely and this is the name by which he will be called the Lord is our righteous and so um, I hope you're still following me the Lord says to Jeconiah the descendant of David I will throw you into captivity and none of your offspring none of your offspring shall succeed as king 
you know, at, in David's line. But yet there's this promise that the Lord would send another king of the line of David. He will be a different king because he is a righteous king. And the question now here is, how will the Lord accomplish that? How will the Lord accomplish that? And now remember what he says to Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, on that day declares the Lord, I will take you, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shealtel, declares the Lord, and make you like a signet ring, because I have chosen you, declares the Lord of hosts. The Lord is ready to forgive his people, only if his people would repent. And though the Lord the Lord broke the line of kings. You know, Israel did not have a king after uh, David's line until the time of Jesus. You know, the king that we have in, New, in the New Testament is King Herod. It's not of the line of David. And yet he says to Jerubbabel, You know what? I have chosen you. And I will fulfill my promise to David through you. And you know what? In Matthew chapter 1, verse 12 to 16, we read these words. After the deportation to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Shealtel, and Shealtel was the father of Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel was the father of Ebud, Ebud the father of Eliakim, Eliakim the father of Azor, Azor the father of Zadok, and Zadok the father of Akim, and Akim the father of Eliud, and Eliud the father of Eleazar, and Eleazar the father of Mathan, and Mathan the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was was born who is Christ now that's the Lord's compassion that is the Lord's compassion as though he executed judgment on Israel that the Lord allowed the Israelites to be captive for 70 years in Babylon the Lord brought them home the Lord gave them a new heart so that they rebuilt the temple of the Lord and the Lord restored his promise to the line of David they did not have a king anymore a political king just like the line of David and the kings of Judah before but the Lord fulfilled his promise to David through Zerubbabel by he, making him, by choosing him from whom out of his line will come the better king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ himself. Now this gives us a picture of the blessing of really obeying the Lord and repenting from the Lord. You know, just after reading this, the, the parable of the prodigal son just came to me in a new light. Because remember that part where the prodigal son came to his senses? Luke fifteen seventeen to 23. Let me read it to you. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against and before you I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate for this my son was dead and is alive again he was lost and is found and they began to celebrate and once the son repented the lord felt compassion towards him all he needed to do was go home and he was restored and just like the israelites they the signet ring was taken off of them but once they returned the lord chose them once more Zerubbabel again a descendant of David and gave him the promise that one day Messiah will come and he will cleanse his people and save them from their iniquity that's the Lord's compassion the Lord is eager to restore blessing upon his children but they first have to come home that's the Lord's compassion and finally communion you know we we never plan these things. Um, our communion is always on the first Sunday of the month. And today is the first Sunday of the month of July. 
And you know what? We we talked about this a while ago. You know, holiness cannot be manufactured manufactured by contaminated hands. Remember the the illustration of the alcohol and the mask. No matter how much you put alcohol on your hand, you will always be contaminated. You know, and whenever you touch things, it does not become holy, and you contaminate it as well. Holiness cannot be manufactured with contaminated hands. But the Lord talks about a signet ring now. A ring that that manifests authority. You know what? And that's very interesting. Because if we ourselves touch anything that's impure, we become defiled by it. But Jesus is something special. Remember the story, Matthew 9, 20 to 21. It says, Behold, a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood for 12 years came up behind Jesus and touched the fringe of his garment. For she said to herself, If I only touch his garment, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. You know, here's Jesus. In of ourselves, we cannot make ourselves holy. The only thing that we can offer the Lord are impure things, contaminated things, tainted things. And yet, you know what? One touch of Jesus, one touch of the fringe of the garment of Jesus, we are transformed. This woman used to be defiled. When she touched Jesus, Jesus could have been defiled if he was any other person. But he is God. He's the Son of God, perfectly God and perfectly man. And he is able to purify us from every defilement that he that we might have in fact at the time when the lord instituted the lord's table math john 13 2 to 4 it says during supper when the devil had already put it into the heart of judas iscariot simon's son to betray him jesus knowing that the father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from god and was going back to god rose from supper he laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was wrapped around him. The Lord Jesus Christ is the signet ring of God. In and of ourselves, we cannot make ourselves clean. We cannot offer to, to the Lord anything that's pure and holy. But just with one touch of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can be made whole. And that is what we celebrate today as we come to the Lord's table. Friends, today, I want for us to consider the blessing of the Lord. You know, this is the blessing of the Lord. Can you imagine? Consider this with me. We were contaminated with sin. We were contaminated with sin. We are contaminated with a fatal, eternally fatal disease that would merit divine judgment and eternal separation from God. But God lavished His compassion on us that we may have communion with Him only by the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross, the blood that makes us clean. The blood that makes us whole. Friends, remember. Remember that there is no blessing apart from obedience. The only way that we could be truly blessed by the Lord is by obeying Him. Today we are approaching the Lord's table. We are going to sing a song first and then come to the table. Let me encourage you, as the word of the Lord says, to examine your hearts. Think to yourselves and discern. Think about your contamination. The Lord is offering forgiveness to you and I. And so, let's join our hearts in prayer. Let's take a moment of silence as this song is being played. And just commune with the Lord. Ask Him to purify our lives and to restore us to the people that we are made to be. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for our time in, our, in your word. Lord, we are truly contaminated by sin. We are contaminated by many failures that we have. And there's really nothing that we can do to purify ourselves in and of ourselves. Everything we touch becomes contaminated. 
And yet, Lord, you touched us. You touched us. You poured out your love upon us. You poured out your blood for us. And you cleansed us. Lord, we come to you now and we ask you to examine our hearts. Reveal to us our sinful ways. Lord, I pray that you would minister to us at this moment. As we take a moment of silence and introspection before we partake of the elements of communion. Lord, be glorified in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The word of the Lord says, Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the bod the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill and some have died. But if we judge ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. from the Lord what I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me so I'll partake together in the same way he took he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup you proclaim the lord's death 
until he comes again. So all partake together. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the bread and for the cup. Remembrances that though we are contaminated, you showed your compassion towards us. You poured your grace upon us and you healed us and you cleansed us and you made us whole. Lord, I pray that you would allow us to consider our ways. Would you see through our hearts, Lord? Would you cleanse us from within and make us pure? Lord, I pray that, that, that our hands will not be tainted anymore by the contamination of sin, but only by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so now, Lord, as we go into our week, may you release us with the fullness of your blessing. May you truly bless us as we seek to obey you. Lord, help us to consider our standing before you and seek to obey you in everything that you say and everything that you call us to do. Though it may be difficult, but in the power of the Holy Spirit, we are assured of victory because your grace and your power is with us. And so now, Lord, would you receive all the glory that's due your name in our lives, our church, our communities, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you all.